Tom and Ann from 2K Aquatics, and uh, I just wanted to say hi to my subscribers, and a uh, special hello to Stefan from Lush and Salty Aquariums. Uh, we were just watching, uh, re-watching a live stream uh, that Stefan and Father Fish did together, and uh, I just wanted to say hi and thanks to Stefan. We get over here to the aquarium. Got a bit of a fuss going on over here with the shrimp and the snails. You can see my black devil spike snail over there humping his way over. One of my golden mystery snails here. And they're all feasting on some algae and uh, mineral junkie bit there, that white piece that the uh, red shrimp is over and some shrimp treats the big pile right there they're starting to shred apart that gives them a lot of uh protein it's pure protein these they're uh soybean based soy husk soybean husk based product and they don't pollute the aquarium they provide a lot of uh Protein. I also feed those to my golden algae eater because she's bigger now and she needs a lot of protein in her diet. So she gets a lot of these every day. And the Bacter AE because I'm raising shrimp in here and the mineral junkie bits. Um, that helps give them all the minerals and stuff that they need to assure that they can uh, shed their outer skeletons and you can see some here on this shrimp lolly treat here uh, one's doing a headstand up here that's funny you can see that little the whole piece of algae uh, tab there I remember one time I put one of those in there instead of breaking it up in smaller pieces and one of my big amano shrimp came over it Turn that thing up on its side and rolled it backwards like a wheel off into the valve scenario. Man, they're really piling up over here. All my golden mystery snails are headed over here. It looks like they're little taxis, like little new yellow New York taxis with my shrimp on their backs. That's hilarious. But yeah, they're all running over here. So my auto sink list is coming in for some algae because they're doing such a great job controlling algae in this aquarium so I make sure they get plenty of algae they're growing big and fat here comes one of my female yellow purebred neocaridina shrimp I'm looking forward to seeing some babies from her I got a couple more uh, another it's like she's jumbling eggs down there too if you can see that down underneath she's uh Definitely jumbling eggs. See if I can zoom in on her a little bit. Yeah, she's definitely jumbling eggs down there. They move them around constantly with their back feet to keep uh, mold, keep from mold and stuff. Prevent that from growing on the eggs before they're born. They'll have baby shrimp in there. She'll have baby shrimp in there soon. And they'll probably go over here into my chola logs and spend their first couple of weeks of life. Man, I mean, there's just a pile up over here on this uh, shrimp treats and mineral bites. And I just gave it a dose of Bacter AE over here. I got their fresh salad. And no, I don't just put that in here for her videos. You see that center piece of that garlic right there? That yellow part, the heart of that garlic. They will cut that out of there. They've already been working on it. For some reason, they get attracted to that right away. And you can see one of my shrimp is on top of a slice of strawberry. There's uh, baby spinach and some spring salads. 
that purple salad, a baby carrot. They love that baby carrot. My snails will come over here and eat up. They've already started working on that. You see that shrimp over there going to that yellow part of the garlic. They're going to cut that center piece right out. They do it every single time. And uh, they immediately go for that part of the garlic. They're going to cut that out of there and drag it off the fork and cut it up into little pieces and eat it and drag it all over the aquarium. And there's a tiny little thin slice of blueberry on there too. So they got a nice little fresh uh, garden and fruit salad going on here. It's only been in here for a couple minutes and uh, they're already working on that center piece of the garlic there. It gives them a lot of vitamins and minerals that they need and, and it's also a really good uh, source of magnesium. The magnesium is, is something that gets depleted in these aquariums really fast. No, I'm not dumping bottled magnesium in here, but uh, it, it's a good source of magnesium for the fish, for the invertebrates, for my snails and my shrimp there. You can see they're just all over this. And they behave this way, especially with that centerpiece of garlic there. That's just uh, get a little closer view. Yeah, he's, he's, that shrimp is cutting that centerpiece of that garlic out. Working on that until he gets it out of there, he or she. And all the shrimp are gathering over here. The snails will come uh, when they're not busy over here. But, uh, yeah, there was one of my snails eating on that pure protein, the soybean husks. They would just gobble that stuff up. You can see them concentrating on that. That snail, well, that rabbit snail will uh, just feast on all that protein. All the shrimp are starting to gather over here. There goes another one of my yellow neocaridina shrimp. Two of them back there. The purebred ones that I'm looking for some babies from here soon. All these came from Mark Shelley Aquatics. All these shrimp. I ordered uh, Skittles shrimp from him. All different colors and they've been breeding in here for nearly a year now close to it shrimp are one of the first things I put in here along with my big amano shrimp they're kind of a first alarm system for anything that might be going wrong in this tank I'll probably see it in my shrimp first any of them are acting up I have one of the mono shrimp sheds its outer skeleton I can immediately tell because all the shrimp would be going crazy in here, darting in every diff direction. And uh, I can tell really quickly if anything's going south in this aquarium just by watching the behavior of my fish. I'm kind of a, a little bit of a species junkie. I don't play by the rules all the time. Well, the inch per inch of fish per gallon or any of that stuff. I've got dwarf marble hatchets and big silver hatchet fish, dwarf rainbows, I've got male endlers, I've got white cloud minnows and uh, some glow light tetras now. And some long fin zebra danios you can see here. They really like that current towards the back by that created by that air stone and that sponge filter. So the zebra danios spend a lot of time over there now. And my shrimp spend a lot of time on top of those all around those filters too, getting the biofilm and stuff. They and the babies spend their first few weeks eating on the biofilm on the side of the tank, or the back of the tanks where I've never cleaned before. And there 
there's a piece of cuddle bone. I always keep a piece of cuddle bone. It's a good constant supply of calcium for my shrimp and snails. You can see that shrimp there working on it. The snails spend a lot of time on that cuddle bone. I learned about cuddle bone when I used to have my own store back in the mid 80s. I kept a lot of large parrots, macaws, two cans, and some rare birds. And that's where I learned about the uh, calcium source and those cuddle bones that's uh, from a cuttlefish. And I bought those on Amazon. And they are given a constant supply. But I never have to worry about any of my vertebrates not getting enough calcium. And there's a constant source of calcium for them. And that cuddle bone right there. I'll take a piece of it and put it in, in a pot of water with the hold it down with a spoon and uh, boil it for a while let it simmer until uh, it'll sink because they don't sink when you first put them in here and I always keep catapa leaves in here there's some underneath this cave always catapa leaves you can see uh, my one of my black devil spike snails it's back there. Snails will feed on those catapa leaves until there's nothing left. And my marble moss balls, algae balls. But it's uh, there goes some of my neon tetras. A lot of my shrimp and snails are all over here having a great feast. So anybody just sticking around this far in the video. And like Stefan and some of the other uh, subscribers, I wanted to ask a question. I used to raise honeybees. And I was I had Amish mentors. I was very fortunate having Amish mentors. And they taught me how to raise and work in harmony with the honeybees and not use any kind of protective gear at all. Uh, no beekeeper's jacket or beekeeper's glove. Or those beekeeper uh, netted veils, hats that are most all commonly used in that. And uh, I did that for a couple of few years. I had great success at it. And I did put a slow motion video that I shot of in front of one of my beehives on here. And it's got some lux and stuff. But I have some of those videos on my uh, Facebook page which I haven't been on my Facebook page in about three and a half years I just uh, just had enough of it so I haven't been on social media in any form in like three and a half years and I'm better off for it but my wife was able to go back and get into my Facebook help me give me because I couldn't get into it uh, took a while for the verification but I have access to my beekeeping videos now with my Amish mentors Emmanuel and his brother Henry so I'm thinking I'm going to add some of those videos uh, to this channel because to be honest with you I don't have enough of them that make it worth starting another whole YouTube channel on beekeeping those videos are in a lot of beekeeping groups on Facebook, but I'm no longer active on Facebook at all. So, it's just something else that brought me a lot of fun and pleasure, and it was a big change in my life. So, I, I think I'm going to upload some of those where I give you a chance to uh, see my Amish mentors and yes, I'm both Emmanuel and his brother Henry and his family gave me express permission to videotape them and uh, audio, let me have audio and they knew it was going to social media, they didn't have a problem with that. So that was very fortunate. So I'm gonna upload some of those videos and hopefully, you know, that doesn't upset any of my subscribers. 
that have come here for aquariums and fish. Well, there is more to me than just aquariums and fish. I kind of want to show that. So yeah, I'm going to upload some of those videos uh, that I made with my mentors. And uh, like I've mentioned in some of my videos here, I've got people like Father Fish and Stefan from Lush and Salty and uh, I think Corey from Aquarium Co-ops and Alex from Fishery. Alex I learned so much from Father Fish that I consider them to be mentors. And uh, you know, having someone that, that guides you through all the technical parts and uh, things that would take years to research and these people give that information so freely on and their YouTube channels and uh, I thank them for all that they've saved me so many years of research and I still you know I take notes from their channels and I go back and I do my own research and I figure out what's what works for me best here in this situation. I'm adding more plants here. I'll be honest, in the beginning, I wasn't, uh, I had some self-doubt maybe. I have some problems with self-doubt at times. And didn't think I was capable maybe of doing a full-fledged, uh, all-natural aquarium with no filtration. So yeah, I've got filtration on here. I'm adding new plants. This tank has been up for over a year now. And one at a time, at some point in time in the future, I'm going to just unplug these, unhook these sponge filters, and uh, go for it when I feel comfortable enough. So I hope everybody has a great day, and I uh, hope so you can take time with my subscribers and viewers, my returning viewers. I have hundreds of them that haven't subscribed yet. And if you'd like to, uh, click on like and subscribe to this video. And uh, if you haven't seen any of Stefan's videos from Lush and Salty Aquariums, I highly suggest you watch some of his videos and consider uh, subscribing to him. And if Father Fish and some of these other people I've mentioned uh, can save you a lot of headache and heartache and fish loss and... Uh, Get you through those beginning times. You know, I don't use filter uh, fertilizers in this aquarium at all. I did give a dose or two, a cap full or two of potassium in here because that gets quickly depleted. And so I got, I had some potassium here, and and uh, through this salad here, I'm adding some magnesium. It's much needed. It's critical to add that to have that available for your fish, your snails, your invertebrate. So probably in one of the next videos you're going to see here, I can sign off here is going to be uh, one or probably two of my beekeeping videos. When I very, when I, so right away when I first started, well, my wife and I lived in a very uh, remote area of Kentucky that you had to take a river ferry to get to um, on the Cumberland River. And uh, 2,000 acres across the river from our house was uh, a very large Amish group, families, and um, Emmanuel, his brother, cousins, and uncles, they all raised bees. Um, did not use any kind of protective gear and when I learned about that I was just immediately drawn to it and fascinated and uh, I had a lot of success and uh, even upset some people on Facebook beekeeping groups they just thought I was just completely and totally insane and not wearing protective gear look at that little mama Yellow knee caradina shrimp there with her babies and her long trail of poo behind her. That poo, the fish poo, the snail poo, the, everything this aquarium needs as far as the plants and stuff. There's just no need for 
liquid fertilizers in here. Uh, what these shrimp and snails and stuff leave way behind of uh, urea and fish poo and waste is exactly what these plants need. So from Tom and Ann and 2K Aquatics, look I'm over a 20 minute mark. It's one of my longest videos. You know, I'm not a public speaker. My wife has had a lot more of that her life. She's a writer and a freelance journalist. And uh, but this YouTube channel doing this is bringing me out of my comfort zone where I'm not so self-conscious about you know I'm uh, a little older now <laughs> and my father's still around he's 89 but that may be some self-conscious I feel maybe about my looks or the way I talk never really cared for the sound of my voice when I hear it I'm recording but yeah, it's bringing me out of my comfort zone, and I thank you all for that. Thank my subscribers for that. And uh, I'm going to be making a lot more videos here. You know, quite a few projects in mind. So hope everybody has a great day. And like and subscribe to this video. If you care to, there goes one of my pretty little autosynchless algae eaters there. Getting her belly, getting his belly full. I just love these little fish. They're such a great addition to this tank. And battling algae. Not all algae is bad. I mean, if you've got algae, it's a good thing. It shows a sign of a healthy tank. What are zebra Daniels are feeding off of this stuff over here? Whatever that is, I don't care. They love it. And my dwarf rainbows will go over there and feed on it too and they're good little catchers of those white worms that are in my aquarium I see them anytime one of those little white worms that come up out of the substrate or just lodge from one of the top of these caves where those rainbow fish are right on it and gobble them up like candy if they miss them then my neon tetras will go get them they're a good little crew the neon tetras are hanging out with those glow light tetras now. So, um, once again, a great big thank you to my subscribers. And uh, we've gotten quite a, actually another dozen or so since uh, we hit the 100 subscriber mark the other day. So I couldn't be happier. My wife Ann couldn't be happier. Every time she sees a notate, notation of a new subscriber, she lets me know. Hey, you got a new subscriber. So everybody have a blessed day. And I'll leave you with this shrimp. On that garlic. Yeah, watch Father Fish. And Alex and Fish Tree. And they'll, they'll tell you. They're the other ones that will tell you about the amazing benefits of garlic. And why that shrimp is so attracted to it. So everybody have a wonderful day, and uh, I'm out of here. I'll be back soon. I'm going to be uploading a couple of videos today. You're getting fair warning here if you're actually paying attention at the end of this. I'm going to put some bee videos up, and uh, hopefully that doesn't throw everybody for a loop and I lose a bunch of subscribers, but here we go. See you in a little bit. Thank you and bye.